Hello, my name is David O'Neill, and today I will be presenting on Alzheimer's disease. I will be providing some background information about the function and structure of the brain to better support the material in the later slides. So the brain has three vital parts. First, the cerebrum is the largest part of the brain that consists of the parietal, temporal, occipital, and frontal areas. Functions include and are not limited to vision, motor control, hearing, moral judgment, and reasoning. The cerebellum is the area located beneath the cerebrum, behind the brain stem, and it facilitates balance and coordination. Finally, the brain stem sits beneath the cerebellum and it connects the brain to the spinal cord and controls automatic functions such as breathing, digestion, heart rate, and blood pressure. With each heartbeat, arteries carry about 20-25% of your blood to your brain, where billions of cells use about 20% of the oxygen. When you are thinking hard, your brain may use up to 50% of the fuel and oxygen. The brain has 100 billion nerve cells, 100 trillion synapses, and dozens of neurotransmitters. A certain cause of Alzheimer's disease is yet to be found. Scientists have not found the cause, but they have a few associated risk factors such as age, gender, prior head injuries, diabetes, and hypertension. However, they found individuals who possess some variation of the apolipoprotein E gene are three to eight times at higher risk for developing the disease. Early onset versus late onset. Early onset captures 5% of the affected population and symptoms appear between 30 to 60 years of age. Due to consistent damage to the brain tissue over long periods of time from activities such as boxing, on the other hand, the late onset group captures the other 95% of the population. Symptoms and signs appear after six years of age. The late onset of the disease is caused by one of the three identified genetic mutations that are passed down in an autosomal dominant fashion. Among families of the amyloid precursor protein, APP, presenilin 1, and presenilin 2 genes. Degeneration. The disease starts at the hippocampus and spreads to the frontal, temporal, and parietal areas in the brain. It also causes the ventricles to get larger, as we can see in the picture. It, the disease is a neurological, progressive, deteriorating disease that has no cure. The amyloid precursor cascades in the brain to become the beta amyloid protein, and the accumulation of the protein causes plaques. These plaques ultimately interrupt synapses and neurotransmitters in the brain, which leads to the symptoms and signs of the disease. Plaques form when protein pieces called beta amyloid come together. Beta amyloid comes from a larger protein found in the fatty membrane surrounding nerve cells. The small clumps block cell-to-cell -cell signaling and synapses, which ultimately lead to memory loss, confusion, and abnormal behavior. Another protein abnormality of the brain is the formation of the neurofibrillary tangles due to the accumulation of plaques. The neurofibrillary tangles are formed from abnormality. Another protein abnormality of the brain is the formation of the neurofibrillary tangles due to the accumulation of plaques. The neurofibrillary tangles are formed from abnormality of the tau protein, which misfolds and ultimately disrupts neural and cellular communication. Signs. Some signs that doctors can check for is by assessing the beta amyloid protein and neurofibrillary tangles present in the brain through positron emission tomography, as well as levels present in the cerebrospinal fluid. Some symptoms that are reported by the affected person is memory loss, confusion, and abnormal behavior. Due to the tissue loss, plaque, and neurofibrillary tangles formation, the affected individual can forget what simple objects are called or not know their whereabouts of his or her location and can experience random episodes of aggression and hyperactivity. Treatments. Medications is the main source of treatment that can decrease the symptoms. Donepezel is the main medication that is used in over 50 countries and what it does is inhibit acetylcholinesterase activity and increases the levels of acetylcholine. This is helpful because acetylcholine plays a major role in memory recall in the brain. So limiting the breakdown of it and increasing the supply will decrease symptoms. In a study done on human subjects, donapizil was administrated for 14 days and at the end of the study, cerebral acetylcholine levels increased by 35% and the 
acetylcholinesterase activity decreased by 66%.